and welcome to Shelby This Week. We're covering news from around Shelby Township and all over Macomb County. You've seen orange barrels along 24 Mile Road for a long time now, but we'll be giving you a timeline on when it's expected to be done. And grab your hiking gear. There's some new trails in Shelby Township. And a big surprise for a deserving teacher, why a Utica community school teacher will be driving around in style. We've got those stories and much more. But first, as many people know, there's a fifth season in Michigan, pothole season, and state officials are looking into funding to fix the roads. That's right, Kelly. It is pothole season, and funding for this problem has been an ongoing issue. But now, the money set aside for our roads could be bailing out other statewide issues. We're fearful of having people drive their vehicles on our roadways. Damaging potholes cover the roadways every year in Macomb County. And last year, County Executive Mark Hackle said calling a 911 call center was the fastest way for a quick fix. We will get to a pothole within one hour if it's damaging people's vehicles, as long as a 911 center brings it to our attention. Macomb County has 140 miles of road that needs to be reconstructed. The state gave an appropriation that would only fund six miles of road reconstruction. It's approximately $1 million per mile of a two-lane road. So, as you can only imagine, we are never going to keep pace with these road problems that we're having. And it was a failure of the legislature to do what the responsible thing was, is to guarantee road funding, which is the number one thing the public is asking for today. They didn't do it, and the reason why is because it's more concerned about getting reelected. Funding for roads is hard to come by. According to Hackle, of the $1.2 billion designated for municipal government, DPW, and roads, only $200 million is left due to state revenue sharing, used to bail out Detroit Public Schools and the Flint water crisis. So why spend more money patching potholes rather than saving the funds to fix them altogether? It's a simplistic answer mm -hmm. because if you're not attending to the, the potholes that are out there that are causing damage to the vehicles, it's going to continue to cause damage to those vehicles. So it's the, and it's sad, as I mentioned before, it's sad that we're trying to figure out how do we come up with solutions to fix potholes. Many neighborhoods in Macomb County are older, which means residential roads are breaking down. Growing up in the city of Warren, I mean, we played in our, our front yard mm -hmm. and uh, the street. The street was our, if you will, playground. We played games, we made up games, we would do everything yeah. in that street. Today I go back and I look at that neighborhood and it's sad. I mean, the, the deplorable conditions of the actual roads right in front of people's homes. And potholes can certainly wreak havoc on your car. If you're unlucky enough to hit one, you'll spend a lot of money on repairs, especially if you don't have insurance. In a recent CarInsurance.com study, 21% of drivers are uninsured in Michigan, which is the fifth highest percentage in the U.S. But insurance in Michigan is the highest in the nation as well. We hold the title for most expensive minimum car insurance coverage at more than $2,400. Delaware comes in at number two with $1,500, and Connecticut comes in at number one with just over $1,000. And we'll have the full list of car insurance numbers and Nick's entire interview with Executive Mark Hackle on our Shelby TV Facebook page. The orange barrels have been out for a while, but the final stages of reconstruction are set to begin now that the new 42-inch water main has been installed along 24 Mile Road. The final stages include paving roughly six miles of roads, like 24 Mile, the intersection at Shaner, and the area around the Macomb Orchard Trail and May Stecker Park. As for a timeline, crews hope to start paving as soon as the asphalt plant reopens, which will happen next month. They hope to start around April 18th and have the final layer of asphalt in place by the end of June. That will put the project roughly one year ahead of schedule, leaving residents with a new road and water supply. The Shelby Township Police and Fire Departments are going up against their rivals in a basketball game for charity. They'll team up with Utica Fire and Police for the second annual Charity Basketball Taste Fest against the Sterling Heights Departments. Officer Scott Phelps is already gearing up for the big game. Uh, we still try to get together uh, pretty quick here, at least once a week, to try to play basketball with the, our team. I'm not sure what Sterling's doing. I'm sure that they got something going on and trying to practice as well. but. Um, we're starting to get involved and get going and the biggest challenge I think is going to be it's a big court running back and forth. I think it's it's a lot different than running on a treadmill trying to stay in shape. And when asked who was going to win he gave a pretty good answer. We just want to keep it keep it fun and not get blown out. That's the key. We want to keep it close and not embarrass anybody in the department and uh, just have fun. The event is on April 14th at Joe Dumars Fieldhouse and proceeds go to the Henry Ford Health System. For more information, head to our Shelby TV Facebook page. 
When the warmer weather hits, you can now spend your time walking the new trails in Shelby Township. The trails created by the Beautification Committee are located between Chief Gene Shepherd Park and Yates Cider Mill. Another path connects the Clinton Kalamazoo Canal Ridge Trail and connects to the existing path behind Yates. And an Eagle Scout also built several boardwalks along the path as well. A kindergarten teacher from Utica Community Schools will be driving around Macomb County in style thanks to a free two-year lease on a brand new Mustang. Charlie Cadado tells us what makes this teacher so special. Ms. Molly Marinick. All smiles as kindergarten teacher Molly Marinick learns she's Utica Community Schools Teacher of the Year. Extremely overwhelming, such an honor. Um, Shock. <laughs> I'm feeling very blessed. I know I work among, among many wonderful teachers. It's a special honor considering the 1,500 teachers who work in the district. Miss Marinick teaches at Jack Harvey Elementary in Sterling Heights. What makes her unique is a special kind of energy. I come in every morning. I come in about an hour and a half actually before school starts and uh, just to prepare myself, you know, with kindergarten. Obviously, we do a lot of activities that that demand prep for kindergartners. Thanks to the folks at Suburban Ford of Sterling Heights, Ms. Mernick's award includes a two-year lease on a brand new car. She picked a silver Mustang convertible. This is nice. It's kind of a no-brainer. Who better to honor than the people that influence our children probably as much as their parents do. Those who have worked with Ms. Mernick know this is well-deserved. You have to visit her classroom. Um, whenever she's teaching, there's just this it's just this energy she exudes. Um, she clearly loves her kids. You can see it as she interacts with them. You can see it in her care as she instructs them, as she sits with them and helps them to learn their sounds, helps them to write. I, I, I really did not have any expectation of that. You know, you go into this and you know, like I said, how many other wonderful teachers there are. All right. <laughs> Soon you'll see Miss Marinick cruising through the county at school's own speeds. For Shelby this week, I'm Charlie Cadotto. We can all think of someone who's motivated us or made an impact on our lives. Shelby TV's Tim Meyer has more on the person who's done just that for the Eisenhower football program. Eisenhower's Jeff Florky has been a special part of the Eisenhower Eagle football team for over 15 years. Tonight, they honor him with a documentary film about him and many of the coaches and players who he was associated with over those 15 years came together to celebrate his career at Eisenhower. Well, when I started my company, I wanted to do a documentary, documentary about somebody. So uh, I saw Jeff at Meyer one day and he's talking to me about his homecoming streak and how long he's been with the team. And I was like, this is a perfect person to do a documentary film of. Former Eisenhower head football coach Bob Lancey served as the master of ceremonies for the evening. He presented Jeff Florkey with Ike Football's coveted Superman t-shirt and a game jersey of the legendary Eagles player Joe DiGiorgio. Well, Jeff and his dad came by one day and they came into the locker room and we invited him in and uh, he said Jeff's excited about being a student at Eisenhower and he'd like to get more involved. And uh, we said, well, I got just a job for him. And I said, you see all these coaches are always thirsty. And you see this refrigerator here, we always got to fill it up with water. And I took him out and showed him where the water was. And heck, he just took over the whole thing and it just became, and all of a sudden he became one of our main figures with the team. Having Jeff around as an inspiration, not only to, to the players, which it is every year, uh, but also to the coaches. He doesn't care about a win or a loss, which is what you know sports is about. He just cares about being around. He cares how the kids feel, cares that they're playing together. And uh, it's just a great thing to have him. And a true dynasty and honor being part of a, of a, of a legendary group from, from the Lanty era to now. When I was like a little boy coming from Eisenhower to, from Mallow, I was like, like Binding Nemo. I had a, I have a Jimmy with Chalk on my life. My WrestleMania Hall of Fame, it like, you don't see that very often. And now I'm very happy being with all the Eisenhower people I love. For Shelby This Week, I'm Tim Meyer. And still ahead on Shelby This Week, Congresswoman to Commissioner. We'll tell you about the latest candidate for a top job here in Macomb County and the major ally backing her, who could be a game changer in the election. And some major food companies are adding labels to their packaging. Find out what these labels will warn consumers about. 
Well, it's tax season and scammers pretending to be from the IRS are trying to get your money. Coming up, find out how to protect yourself and what to do if a scammer calls you. They told me a bottle couldn't dream. That I would never become a superhero. But I learned how to fly. Just to come back in a new disguise and be the hero that I've always wanted to be. Representative Candace Miller announced last year she wouldn't be running for Congress again. Instead, she's just announced she'll be running for Macomb County Public Works Commissioner. Miller has spent 14 years of service in the U.S. House of Representatives, but in her announcement video, she says she's excited about her new path. Working to improve our environment so that our children and our grandchildren can enjoy what we have had. And a big part of that means addressing inadequate underground infrastructure for both our sewer and our water. And, and County that, Executive Mark Hackle is throwing support her way as a major ally, even though their party views don't align. I'm looking for another teammate. I'm looking for someone that's going to help us move Macomb County forward. I'm not concerning myself with the R or the D. It doesn't matter to me. The reality is I want somebody that has a passion for what it is we have a passion for, all of us who are living here in this area. Miller will be running against the current Public Works Commissioner, Anthony Morocco, who has held the job since 1992. Tax season is here, and so are the scammers. Law enforcement agencies are sending out warnings to be aware of suspicious phone calls pretending to be from the IRS. Our Charlie Cadado actually spent time talking to one of those scammers and also gives us some tips on how to protect yourself. Tax season is prime time for criminals hoping to hit the jackpot. You've heard it before, fraudsters calling and demanding you pay up or you'll be arrested. It's been happening for years and in most cases, police can do nothing about it. Most of these are generated from outside the country or elsewhere in the United States. They're not coming from our backyard. So I got on the phone hoping to talk to one of these fraudsters, but first I met with Herb Menard, a volunteer computer assistant at the Shelby Township Library. He's come across almost every kind of scam. We want to ask that individual for his full name, first and last name, his badge number, in a callback number. More than likely he'll hang up when you... <laughs> so I put Herb's tip to the test. And what was your name and your ID number? You can write down my name, which is Elvis Walker. It's E-L-V-I-S. Elvis Walker. Yes. Well, here's who Elvis Walker really is, a fake name known on the Internet for tax scams. Elvis claims the sheriff's going to come pick me up if I don't pay him $8,900. What sheriff is that? Do you know what sheriff you're going to be forwarding this to? Okay, it will be a local sheriff. Now, what's the lo what city? What state? Hold on. Hold on. In a couple of minutes or a couple of hours, the federal government will also seize all your property assets, all your bank accounts will be frozen. Get this, Elvis doesn't know anything about me, not even my name. But somehow he knows exactly how much the IRS wants. You don't have my phone number, you don't have my name, you don't have anything, and how do you know I owe money if you don't have any of my information? I do have your information, sir, but I'm just verifying over this recording line that I'm talking to the right person or not, because this is going to stand against you inside the courthouse. Are you really calling from Washington, D.C.? Okay, sir. In that case, as these lines are being fairly recorded and monitored by the Department of Justice, and you are trying to judge a government officer, so I prefer not to say that again. Elvis is no government officer. He's a scam artist. Police know all about him. We're documenting the cases. Our cases are being forwarded to the IRS. The victims are working directly with the IRS. These scams are elaborate. They are looking for targets. Only a small percentage of them actually bite on it. So that's why they call so many people. Police want to remind you, the IRS will never call or email you. The IRS doesn't call you. They send letters. They don't call you over the phone. Yeah, yeah that's true, but this is a time sensitive matter. And this is your matter, your case is in a critical situation. Now that's the reason we just drop your courts to Westman. Experts say it's best to stay skeptical. If it doesn't sound right, hang up. See you, See you later. 
Bye bye. Anytime they're asking you to put some money up front, you can assume it's a scam, whether it be a company or a uh, or the IRS. They never ask for money. For Shelby this week, I'm Charlie Cadado. As part of a statewide initiative to combat invasive species, Shelby Township is getting a big grant from the government. The Michigan Invasive Species Grant Program is awarding $254,000 to the Lake St. Clair Cooperative Invasive Species Management Area. The organization will work to control plants in and around Lake St. Clair with a focus on protecting natural resources such as wetlands, woodlands, and the St. Clair River. If you're looking for a new place for a night out, La Cucina del Vino just celebrated its grand opening. The ribbon was cut at the new Italian restaurant and those who attended the event enjoyed delicious appetizers, a variety of wine, and live entertainment. La Cucina del Vino translates to the kitchen of wine. It is, um, it is not just a wine bar though. It, it's a wine bar, it's a restaurant, and it's really a place that we don't want to put ourselves in a little box where we offer a lot of different things. So I like to tell people we're not just a wine bar, we're not just a restaurant, we're kind of like a cultural destination. La Cucina del Vino hosts private parties and wine classes as well. It's now open at the corner of Van Dyke and 24 Mile Road. Major food companies are changing their nutrition labels nationwide to get ahead of a Vermont law which other states may choose to adopt in time. General Mills, candy maker Mars Inc., and Campbell Soup will all add labels to products that contain genetically modified organism, or GMOs. GMOs have become a controversial topic in the food industry. They're living organisms whose material has been artificially manipulated in laboratories. They make food last longer and in some cases taste better. And while some studies say they're perfectly safe, Others say GMOs are bad for the environment and bad for our health. Nonetheless, a Vermont law says food companies have to start labeling its products if they contain them. So now Mars, General Mills, and Campbell's Soup will distribute those labels nationwide in an effort to be more transparent with customers. That way, whether you think GMOs are bad or good, you'll be able to make the decision to consume them yourselves. Coming up on Shelby This Week, how Nike is bringing a product off the big screen and onto our feet. And bunnies, eggs, and a whole lot of smiles. How Shelby Township is celebrating Easter. It's all to come next. Don't look at me. Your hair's a bit frizzy today. Aww. You should pick that up. <laughs> oh, you're such a dork. Loser. Here, let me help you with that. Oops. <laughs> Every day, kids witness bullying. Oh, look! Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. <laughs> they want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one. Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov. Nike is taking us all back to the future by making dreams of the power lacing shoe a reality. You might remember these shoes from the movie Back to the Future 2. Well now Nike has created a modified power lacing running shoe for everyone. Here's a video of soccer player Cristiano Ronaldo trying on the new pair that's going viral on social media. Once you step in, your heel hits a sensor that will, will automatically tighten the laces. Then there's two buttons on the side that will let you loosen and tighten them to your liking throughout the day. The shoes will go on sale for the holiday season, but a price hasn't been determined yet. They'll also only be available to those that have the Nike Plus app. One of these high school students could be the next Einstein. Shelby TV's Arthur Schink takes us into the world of science at the annual Science Olympiad. Student scientists from across the east side gathered at Macomb Community College's south campus to compete in the 32nd annual Science Olympiad. Over 40 teams from junior high and high schools across Macomb and St. Clair counties competed in dozens of events that tested knowledge in scientific theory covering categories such as food science, fossils, and even electric vehicles. Students matched wits and projects against others, hoping to advance farther in the competition. This is a, a stepping stone tournament for a lot of these teams. About the top 25% will qualify today to go on to the state tournament, which will be in about a month. 
the events have rules, but there's also a lot of creativity and opportunity for them to invent something like the Mission Possible event, you know, the combinations of, of various things, you know, basic elements that they put it together in a very unique way, or the various ways that they've come up to translate, you know, potential energy into air power, into a projectile, and try to hit a target within a half an inch and that's 30 feet down the room, right? So, you know, just pulling together all those elements the kids have a blast doing that, right? Because it's it's not only the science and figuring out how things work, but then it's also, they also get the satisfaction of seeing their hard work pay off and doing something that's sort of cool. Famous inventor Thomas Edison was quoted as saying that genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. Luckily, at the Science Olympiad, there's a little less perspiration. Our mission in Science Olympiad is to, is to inspire the next generation of scientists and we know that there are kids out there who this is their thing, right? It's cool to be a geek, it's cool to be a science. They're, these are the kids who are going to lead our future, right? Uh, when, when we're old and gray, these are, the, these are the people who are going to be running the world and those are the kids you're going to meet here today. We have a website, macombso.org, so the, you know, M-A-C-O-M-B-S-O.org and you'll find loads of information not only about the results of today's tournament, but if you're interested in starting a team, there's information for that. There's training resources. Uh, it's, it's manned by a lot of great, dedicated volunteers. You'll find a lot of great stuff there. Reporting for Shelby This Week, I'm Arthur Shank. Shelby Township needs your help doing some spring cleaning. The Beautification Committee is hosting this year's Cleanup Day on Saturday, April 30th at 8.30 a.m. Volunteers will be given orange safety vests and plastic bags and will be assigned an area to clean up litter. Hundreds of people are expected to come, including groups from the Adopt a Road program. If your family, business, or organization is interested, you too can adopt a road to take care of and you'll be honored with a sign that recognizes your hard work and commitment to keeping Shelby Township clean. If there's bad weather on cleanup day, the rain day will be May 7th. For more information, just head to the township's website at shelbytwp.org. Easter is already here, and even though it doesn't feel like spring has sprung in Shelby Township, Shelby TV's Stacey Santatero went to the Easter Bunny lunch and the egg scramble to see how families are celebrating the holiday. Like Though the temperature was a little chilly, nothing says spring quite like an Easter celebration. The fun began at the community center as the Easter Bunny himself hopped on in for some fun. <laughs> And the fun continued later that afternoon as the Parks and Recreation Department hosted the annual Easter Egg Scramble. Happy Easter! And this free family event had something for everyone. We have the toddler yards behind us for the little ones so they can go through and pick up their eggs without being trampled. And then right after that, we have the larger kids mad scramble for whatever's left of the eggs. <laughs> This year it was 8,000 eggs stuffed by the Senior Citizen Center. Uh, it's a good time. One of our sponsors is Genesis, also the uh, Shelby Kiwanians. So it, it's just a great event. We're here on behalf of Utica Shelby Kiwanis today. I got to get that in, otherwise I'm going to be fine. So I got to <laughs> plug the Utica Shelby Kiwanis. Just a wonderful Thanks, event. Sponsor. Lots of people here today. We got so many people that we have to have Easter egg hunts both at 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock. And it's great to be here. We love Shelby Township. Happy Easter! Easter means that spring is coming and this year it's a little bit early so it's kind of like it's very close and spring means a lot to me because it has all the celebration and when we get to celebrate Jesus and all the happy celebrations. And with that, spring has officially sprung here in Shelby Township. For Shelby This Week, I'm Stacy Sansatera. And there's lots of spring and summer events to come here in Shelby Township. Just head to the website, shelbytwp.org, and click on the Parks and Rec tab for more information. 
And that's it for us here at Shelby this week. You can watch us all the time on Facebook. Just search Shelby TV. We'll leave you now with the entire Easter egg scramble. Enjoy.